Today I'm working on a 2007 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. This one has the Duramax, a 6.6 .6 liter in it. And uh, we're going to do some glow plugs. I'm going to show you why. We got the check engine light on and uh, show you how to do that, how to pull that code. So looking under the steering column, just for reference, you've got your OBD2 connector here, or your DLC diagnostic link connector. Just plug that in. And then turn the key to the on position. On just means that the dash lights come on. Turn off the radio. I don't know what I'm doing there. So you can see the check engine light is on. It's been on. Um, so this just automatically starts reading. This is the Actron CP9550. It's just a good can scanner. They're usually about 100 bucks, 90 bucks, whatever. You cannot even read that, can you? Reading. So to make this one go, you just hold down the enter. And it says 11 or P0. Oh, that's because I got everything disconnected. So I was getting into it. There we go. P0676. That's the main one we're looking for. I got a bunch of other codes because I turned the key on while everything's disconnected. So of course it picks up on that. So that's why we're getting in here. The other one's just all because of the stuff being turned or uh, unplugged so turn the key off and then disconnect the OBD2 thing or else it'll get a bunch more let's throw that on the seat we're gonna need that to clear a bunch of codes basically I got a lot of codes because I disconnected things to get into you know investigating and double checking and all that but uh, you want to turn the key off first and then disconnect the computer because otherwise your the vehicles you know like a uh, can compatibility i talked about that can stands for computer area network or basically you just have a whole bunch of different computers body control computer lighting computer engine control module i mean you got just all of these so if you turn the uh, unplug it while it's you know, it'll say you know lost connection with the computer so the tools that I'm going to use to get into the wheel well so that I can get into the glow plugs and we're going to just going to do all eight of them uh, you need to have an eight millimeter or seven millimeter excuse me and a ten millimeter and then I like to use these these are actually for a hose clamp um, but uh, I use them for body pins because they work awesome I'll show you how that works out here in just a second first of all we're going to go up and around with our seven millimeter. I'm just gonna go zing, zing, zing. I love my butterfly gun. Everything's the same color, which is the color of the dirt wherever you live. We get in here with these and grab the outside first. Grab the base. See how slick and quick that is. I love these things. No, I think they were a Lyle tool, you know, spelled listly. They just really, really work well. Now they'll be on on this side. This is the easy side because there's not a whole lot going on in terms of electrical plugs and connections and all that kind of stuff. Here's another body fastener that's just a stand. I call these a pine tree type, but it works really well on them. And it kind of grabs hold of them so that it doesn't cut them off. Alright, what else we got here? Looks like we got another one up here. On the other side, you've got all of these electrical plugs that have the standard body type that just stick to the connector and that's it. And for those, um, you can use this as well. You can grab it low on that connector that's sticking into this, you know, from the other side grab onto it, push it up, and then when it's close, close it, and then push it out the rest of the way, or just use the flat part of it. So awesome. I think that they labeled it wrong, because when I bought it, it said hose clamp tool, but I can't see it being used for hose clamps and not being used for this, when it's just so awesome for it. Now that 10 millimeter, it's the very front one in here. in there. Voila. So that all said and done, 
uh, just scoot back a little bit. Looks like we have one of these, you know, see this wire harness here. So what we do is just like I said, go up underneath, uh, grab kind of low on it, push it in, and then take the square and push it the rest of the way. And it may not come all the way out, but it's just hanging, oh, I did. It'll be hanging by a thread and it'll come out is what I was going to say. And that's what happened. All right, so take this, Hamajama, get out of here. So where are the glow plugs? Good question. Glow plugs, let's get a laser and get you out of the tripod, I'll show you. I assure you, we use a little dim laser. So there's this one here, this one here, and this one here, this one here. How easy is it to get to the ones on the passenger side? It's pretty dang easy. And these are all the odd numbers. That's one, that's three, five, seven. And of course the ones we need to get to are on the other side. And then uh, another fun thing, this little tube right here that you see, or don't, uh, that's just the little overflow for your HVAC box, your AC drips from there. So that one's real easy to see. Most cars are back behind the engine in no man's land and they're hard to find. So anyway, here is your uh, your filter for the fuel. And uh, if you, there's your water separator. If you wanted to do that at the same time, if you're getting close, you might as well. And uh, there's the starter, exhaust manifold. I don't know why I'm naming all this stuff. It's just kind of fun. So we're in. Now we can get in and do it. Let's show you an up close of what the um, glow plugs look like. This, of course, there's a nut that goes on the back side here, and you'd have to take the nut off right there. This is the wire for the uh, heat circuit, positive, whatever. And of course, it's just grounded in there. They're just really long. I'll show you one that's already out. It's out because it's brand new. It's about to go in. Look at the size of that. I got my laser pen. You can see my hand size. But uh, there's your threaded portion. I typically like to use some type of a, I know, either Loctite or anti-seize on that. Lucky you. So this is the driver's side. This is the side that just sucks. For all you non-English speaking ones, that's what that pan out was for. Um, you can see you've got the glow plugs in the same locations and everything. They're just more boxed in. There's just more going on because of uh, all kinds of different hydraulics. You got fuel lines, you got power steering, you've got all the things that go along with just driver control. And then look up here. I mean, you got just clip after clip after, you know, body fastener of all these different plugs that you got to get out of the way. And then also you've got your intercooler pipe that gets in the way here. But uh, same story. It's not too horrible. Got your steering shaft in the way on this one. On, uh, so with these ones, this one's uh, the even. Yeah, this is the even numbers. This head's a little further back. So this is cylinders two, four, six, and eight. So the one that's bad that caused the check engine light to come on is this one, the third one back on the driver's side. All right. So what you got to do is get an eight millimeter socket, get in there and loosen up the nut off of here. I recommend tracing them all the way off so that they don't fall. There's a lot of places to lose them and then you've got a rattle. It's easy to replace fasteners, especially when you're mean. You've got that whole back wall full of them. But uh, take the wire off, support it, make sure your key's not in the on position. And then take a deep socket and go ahead and loosen the glow plug out of there. They usually crack really hard when you first get them and then they come out pretty easy. There's the crack. Ditch the ratchet. The threads are kind of long. Like I say I like to put either some blue Loctite or some anti-seize on these. Because it's steel into aluminum and it's right above the exhaust. So, there's this one and then we'll know. I thought I'd mention it's a 12 millimeter deep. I oftentimes say size but sometimes I forget. This is an Isuzu motor. It's a Bosch uh, glow plug so of course it's going to be the metric system. 
And if it were BMW product, it'd be a 13, but the Suzu and a lot of the other Japanese manufacturers really like to use even numbers, so it's a 12. So when you go to put the anti-seize on, you don't need a ton of it. You don't want to infest the whole area with anti-seize. Just put it at the very base, like a little blob that you see there is all that you need. And then when you rotate it in, it'll go all the way back and all the way around. So we'll go ahead and weave this into there. Good thing I really like what I do because my hands aren't fit for it. My hands are way too big. We got a customer that's from Hawaii and his hands dwarf mine. I don't blame him for never wanting to work on a car. <laughs> I mean, you can always do tear down and always remove things that are in your way. I oftentimes wind up doing that, but dang. Remember when you're a little kid and you shake hands with some guy, you know, like some brick mason or construction you know somebody who does a lot of work with their hands their hands are just like bare paws that's what this guy's hands like the guy from hawaii he's actually a bodyguard that guy is just huge you've seen that little red station wagon or little red honda accord he drives that I'm like dude why don't you drive like a big truck or something that you can fit in better and he's like, well, when I get in, you know, normally he feels like a bull in the china closet because he's too big for everything, you know, in this culture anyway. He says, I like that little, ah, I dropped it. He says, I like that little car because it makes me feel small and nimble. I'm like, I can see that. That's pretty reasonable. Gotta love the magnet tool. Saves the day again. All right, so I pull my gloves on tight. I probably shouldn't even wear gloves because it's not even a dirty job. I just really like having my hands be clean when I take the gloves off you know for lunch or break or restroom I like to just keep my hands nice anyway it makes me a Mrs. Brian's mobile one really likes it when my hands aren't sharp <laughs> you know, like you get those uh, cracked hands and you get those little burrs that stick up from it those are no fun you ever read that book of Mice and Men? It's Lenny. And then there's that one guy who always wears a glove on one hand and keeps it soft for his wife. I'm like, I do twice that. <laughs> Alright, so that's in there. Six is done. So our work is done here. We're just going to go ahead and replace the rest of them while we're in there. Make this thing reliable. Hope you like my video. If you like it, be sure to hit subscribe. Add two down arrow favorites or uh, click the like button. And uh, if you have any questions, just ask me. This isn't a super complicated job. On a skill level of A, B, C, D, E, this is probably on an A scale. This is a good one for people who are a little timid, but you know, uh, going to go for it. This is a good job for you know people like that. Anyway, uh, shop, the time for this is usually about two hours to do both sides. Uh, a little over two hours, like two, 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 three. So, good luck. Kill me. Kill you. You, sound, you sound like my wife. <laughs> and after that, I'm not sure if I even want to be that anymore. <laughs> True love. All right, so let's test this truck out and see what in the world is going on. We got, oh yeah, turn the key on, wait to start. Go ahead and start it. Check engine light goes off, all the rest of them are going to ding and tease me for a little while. Then they go out. Set the seat belt. We got ourselves a fixed truck. It's what we like. Yay. <laughs>